Thank you. 
community in Christ. We're teaching each other, sharing with each other, and being together. And I keep thinking about, like, yes, we need church school teachers. We need um, mentors and leaders in the church. But we also just need to remember that you teach without being formal. I just spent um, the yester all day yesterday with my grandma. And she's an amazing woman. I feel like I've talked about her a lot, but she's gonna be 99 at the end of the month and she's like up and down her spiral staircase at her house. I mean, she's amazing. And <laughs> she says to me, well, why do you talk about me? Because I've said, I've talked about you before at church. And she goes, I said, you've taught me so much. You have taught me how to share. You've taught me how to give. You've taught me how to be a Christian. So many things that we can do by just being ourselves and caring and loving each other. So remember that as you go through your day. Will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, as we gather this morning to praise and worship you, we are reminded that Christ died for us. We make mistakes, yet find perfection in Christ. Open our eyes to your grace working in our lives. Help us to teach and share the gospel with others to continue to create this amazing community in Christ. In your name we pray, amen.
Good morning, church. How are you today? Welcome to Easter. We're so glad that you're here. We're so glad that someone that you love brought you here today to be with us, to worship with us. As we celebrate community in Christ, which is our theme, it's our hope and our prayer, that you leave with whatever you need today. Whatever it is that you need, whatever word that you need to hear today, that you might hear it through the words, through the songs, through the singing, through the prayers, whatever it is, we're just so glad that you're here. I'm Pastor Kevin. Preaching for us is lead Pastor Megan. We're so glad that you're here. And take a moment, would you please, and share a sign of God's peace with, you, with each other. Say, good morning, God's peace be with you. You look good today. You may be seated and we invite children to come forward for some good news time today. Children or people who still act like kids, they're welcome to come forward. So glad to see you. Come on down. Oh, man. Come on down. We're so glad. Welcome. Yes. Bring the parade of friends. Oh, man. So glad to see you. Did you see how beautiful it is outside already? Can we all play outside all day? Oh, I think we should take, it, take God up on this beautiful day. That's right. What a gift it is to be here. And I got to tell you is that my three daughters always laugh at me. They do. Because I'm always walking out of the house forgetting something. Do you know what your mom or dad or grandma, grandpa, or auntie or uncle, whoever you get to hang out with, what's something that maybe they forget on the regular for me, it's my keys, right? Oh, man. I have a great memory. It's just really short. And, and I can just get out there and, like, do the thing. And I can remember all of these things. And, but, I, you know, keys just escape my brain. And so one of the things that we're doing here today, this Sunday, is we get to still continue to celebrate something that happened a, a few weeks ago, but also many, many years ago, which is Easter, right? That's the name of this church is Easter. Because it's the most important celebration that we have as people who follow Jesus. See, that's the story that I wanted to remind you of. It's a story that Pastor Megan wants to remind you of today. And so I wanted to just share a little bit one more time because next week we have another celebration. And then we head into the summertime and all of the, the things that go along with that. So after Jesus was crucified, right, died on a cross, he was put in this cave. And one morning, these women all went to the cave to find Jesus. And when they got there, the stone was already rolled away. That's not how the story is supposed to go. It was supposed to still be there. But it had gotten moved away. And so the women were very surprised. Can I see your surprised face? That was a good one. Whoa. They got inside the tomb. They went inside the cave. And they kept looking around, where is Jesus? They peeked inside and it was cold, but it was empty. Can you say the word empty? There was nothing inside there. He was gone. And then an angel appeared in a sparkling white clothes, and the glow from the angel brightened even the darkest corners of the cave. The women shielded their eyes from the blinding light. And you know what the angel said? Don't be afraid. I feel like that was the same words that they said when Jesus was born. Don't be afraid. Jesus is alive. Hurry, the angel said. Go tell the other friends. And so the women did not delay. They ran to tell Jesus' friends what they had seen and heard. Whoa. See, what makes that such amazing good news is because Jesus' life and his death on a cross and being raised again that that tomb was empty meant that we can have forgiveness, that we can have love every single day, and we can share that with everyone around us. So in the words of my very favorite friend, Dave Scherer, who's also a rapper, he says to sprinkle sunshine. Can you sprinkle some sunshine with me right here? We get to do that. Can you do this with your fingers? Just like you're sprinkling the things out, right? Is because God does that in our lives every single day. What a cool gift, huh? Would you pray with me? Let's fold our hands. Let's listen for the quiet and then repeat after me. All right. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, for our families, and our church. We love you. 
Amen. Thanks for coming up today, friends. We're so grateful for each and every one of you. As we get ready to hear God's word, we want to just take a moment to bring our honest selves back into the room with these words of confession and forgiveness. In the presence of the whole community, we tell the truth in spite of all we have failed to do and the people we have failed to love. God welcomes us with open arms. So trusting in God's gift of life, we come before our God in honesty and repentance. Would you please pray with me? God, we confess that we have sinned despite our best intentions. We have not lived in a way that bears witness to your love for all people. Forgive us through the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Set us free from sin, hatred, division, and everything that does not bring life. Hear this good news today. Easter people, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And since we have been justified through faith, we have peace. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Your sins have been forgiven in the name of our risen Savior. Thanks be to God. Well, just as Pastor Kevin reminded us of the good news, uh, so too does the Apostle Paul wish to remind both the church in Corinth and us here today of the good news that we know in Jesus Christ. And so we hear today's reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Paul writes, Now I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and God's grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, So we proclaim, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our creator, and our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to tell you all a story about how I found myself crying in front of a compost heap. This past week, I had my final week, my final class as part of a year-long cohort at Princeton Theological Seminary in New Jersey, and I want to express my gratitude to each of you because you granted me the time and the space for this incredible continuing education opportunity where I've been sustained by women in denominations across the country. I've gotten to learn about leadership and ministry from experts in their respective fields. And then this week, I also got to go to the farminary. The farminary, a combination of farm and seminary. It is a unique project at Princeton Theological Seminary. Its uh, goal is to integrate theological education with small-scale regenerative agriculture 
in the conviction that the skills and character vital to faithful Christian leadership must be formed in direct relationship with God's good creation. So the farminary is a small farm just outside of Princeton where students come to learn about Jesus, the good shepherd, by actually being around sheep. They learn what it means when Jesus uh, shares bread and wine by actually being a part of the process that grows wheat and grapes. They learn about God the creator by actually being at work and tending to God's creation. And last week, my learning cohort was uh, taught around the farminary by the Reverend Dr. Nate Stuckey, who is not only a theologian and a pastor, but a multi-generational family farmer. He explained the story and ministry of the farminary to us, sharing this theology of the land alongside his own call story. And eventually, he led us over to the compost pile. And maybe some of you have a compost heap in your backyard, and so you know that it's basically a pile of coffee grounds and leaf clippings and banana peels and, you know, decaying food scraps and plant matter. (laughs) It's full of dead stuff. But with time and with patience, it becomes that which brings abundance, food and life, to future crops. So Nate explained to us that when he came to the farminary, he basically came because all of his other dreams had died. His dream of returning to Kansas to farm, his dream of being a senior pastor in the church he once served, his dream of raising his kids in a farm town just like he had been All those beautiful seeds in his life had sprouted and died and left him feeling lost and alone. He wondered, why would God let all those things die, all those good things in his life? What was the point? And with time and patience and prayer, Nate came to realize that all those things had to die to lead him to this new thing, a thing that was bringing abundant life in ways he never could have expected. And so as me and all my colleagues stood by a compost pile on a humid afternoon in New Jersey, Nate reminded us, he preached the gospel to us, being Christian means We believe in the reality of death. We tell the truth that death is real and at work and it is painful and it is difficult. We don't hide this truth. We name it, we face it, we grieve it. And friends, we believe in a God who does not let death be the last thing. When something dies, it makes space. It turns the soil and tends to it so that God can bring new life. We believe in a God who is constantly at work in renewal, bringing new life even in the face of death, even in our own lives, even when we don't think it could even be possible. And so to remind us of that, Nate sent us each home with a little jar of compost. You are welcome. I did not bring it with me today. You just get to see a little picture of it here. Uh, We each took turns scooping a little handful of compost, all our own, into our nice little glass jars. One of my classmates even commented that it it felt kind of holy walking up there and scooping our compost into a jar, leaving our hands all dirty. It almost felt a little bit like on Ash Wednesday when we get those marks of ashes and we put them on our foreheads and we remember that we are dust and to dust we will return and it doesn't feel like a threat. It feels like a promise that there by the compost pile with dirt under my fingernails and a promise of resurrection that looked a lot like dirt in a jar, I was reminded 
that God is always bringing new life. And that's how I found myself crying by a compost heap. <laughs> and I honestly think that it is also why Paul, in all of his letters and in all of his messages, keeps reminding us about death. It's why he insists on telling his beloved friends in Corinth about the basics of the gospel like we heard all over again today. Death even claimed Jesus, even if it was only for three days. As Paul reiterates, I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He keeps returning this truth back to them. Christ has died. Christ has died for you. Death is real. Death has power. Our God knows what death feels like. We are not alone. We are not forgiven. Christ is risen. Because our God knows that death will not hold us, not in this life, not in the life to come. Paul reminds the Corinthians of all of these people, that list of names that he ticks off, right? All those people who bore witness to the fact that Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, who bore witness to a new way forward, a way of hope and grace and truth and gospel. Friends, we are also those people. We are also on that list. We also bear witness to being faithful, to being a community in Christ. Those who don't pretend that life is going to be perfect or simple or easy, we bear witness to the truth that sometimes there is loss, sometimes there is death, sometimes things even need to die, to make room for what it is that God is working among us so that new life can root and grow. I mean, this is actually still the Easter season, right? Believe it or not, it is still Easter. This is the time where we are best able to remind each other that everything is new because of what Christ has done. And the only way for you to get to something new is to let go of something else. Death and loss and grief and change, they can be painful. They're humbling. They can hurt. But friends, we don't stay in that hurt. By the grace of God, we listen for where the Spirit leads us and we let those new seeds take root. We trust that the ground has been prepared for us, that God is doing a new thing among us, even if right now it sometimes looks a little more like a compost pile. <laughs> we come together and we remind each other, you are not alone. This is not the end. Death may be real, but by the grace of God, so is new life. So for me this week, this little vial of jet black compost, that's what reminds me that we will continue to move forward in this Easter promise of new life, even if it feels like loss and grief and pain are too heavy. That's what's going to work for me this week, but I hope you have something to hold on to. We need to be reminded Maybe there's a friend that you can call, someone you can talk to who always reminds you of the good in the world, of the hope that there is. Maybe there's a Bible verse you can revisit, one of your favorites. Write it on your mirror and dry erase marker or something. Put it in front of yourself. Maybe it's just coming back to worship again next week. 
Whatever it is that's going to help you remember those promises of life, whatever it is, hold on to it and hold on tight. You need to be reminded of that promise of new life again and again, just like Paul needed to do for the people of Corinth, just like we do for each other week after week. We need to be reminded that even on those days where it feels like death and loss and suffering is all there is, we need to trust that God is preparing the ground for you so that you can be rooted in the promise of rich, abundant, full, new life. For this promise and hope, which is yours new every day, friends, thanks be to God. Amen. As we are confident that God's promises are new for us every day, so too we are confident that God will always provide for us. And in gratitude for God's care and love, we return these gifts back to God. Thank you for the offering that you share today. Thank you, kiddos. If you want to come up to our noisy offering box and make a racket, it is a joyful noise. Thank you for the gifts you share.
Would you join me in thanking God for this offering? Let's pray. Blessed are you, O God. We rejoice in the good news of your risen Son. As you have raised us to new life in him, give us joyful and generous hearts, ready to praise you, serve others, and preach the good news of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As one community in Christ, each Sunday we gather and we collect prayers all week long. And I know that you have prayers and concerns on your heart that brought you in the door today too. So let's seek God together in prayer. Each petition, Lord, in your mercy, please respond. Hear our prayer. Holding firmly to the message that has been shared with us, trusting in the promise of life in Christ, we pray. We thank you, God, that you have entrusted the work of the church to all of us. Grant us courage and wisdom as together we do your work in this world. Give us generous hearts, abundant compassion, clear discernment, and ongoing trust in your will, even when it leads us to uncertain places. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you, God, that you are the great healer. May your grace lead us to repair relationships broken by betrayal, hurt, anger, or division. May your wholeness rest on Harold Munshank, Lynette Lapresto, Barb Marr, Jody Taylor, and any of you, any of us that need your gift of healing. May your peace console any who mourn, including the family of Dwayne Bierke, Bob Anderson, Barb, Lord in your mercy. We thank you, God, that you have called us to grow in faith together. So bless Ensley Joy and Camden Sean, along with their parents and sponsors, as they are baptized at the 1030 worship service today. Make us bold to teach and serve in ways that inspire others and lead us to mutual growth and follow your spirit and spirit's guidance. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, God, for all those who embody your mothering spirit among us. We rejoice in the love and devotion of mothers and grandmothers, godmothers and aunts, sisters and daughters, teachers, mentors, and friends as they serve the vocations you have given them. Bless especially those who cannot or will not have children those enduring, enduring infertility, those grieving their mothers or children, those estranged from a parent or child, and any for whom this day feels especially heavy. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, God, for the ministry of our beloved in Tanzania and Guatemala, for Abby Doran, our young adult and global mission volunteer serving in Hungary, and for the St. Paul Area Synod who completed their work of our Synod Assembly this weekend. Lord, in your mercy. We trust in you now and always bring these prayers before you, those things on our hearts and entrusting our whole selves to you. For we pray in the name of your risen Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. love endures for generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same.
Thank our messengers for leading us in worship today. Thank you all. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't take that beautiful worship music for granted, do you? Nope, not one bit. Grateful. A few brief announcements before you head out into celebrating today, enjoying the great outdoors, whatever it may be, friends. We wanted to first let you know that if this is your first time here, we're so glad that you are. And we have these little forms right outside on the usher table, right as you're walking out the door there. If there's a way that we can serve you, pray for you, encourage you, please fill one of those things out, even if you're a member. Anything that we can be doing, we are here for you. We're here because we're a community in Christ. That means we show up for each other when it's good and when it's bad. We also wanted to let you know that we have uh, a program that's been going on for a long time now. For 20 years, this church has dreamed about putting together into one site to bring it all together, to share and harness that energy that Christ has put in our hearts. And friends, this is called the One Easter, One Mission Project. And so this past uh, winter and spring, we've been telling stories, we've been dreaming dreams together, we've been working hard as a team to be able to, tr to truly realize that. And just would encourage you to please go to easter.org slash one site to learn more about what we've been doing and where God is pointing us together. There's also a simple online form there that you can fill out to just ask your questions, if you have a, a chance to prayerfully consider how you want to support this work together, that's the place to fill that out. Please do so, so that you can be informed and be a part of what we're doing here. Um, this is an encouraging, important time, and it, it matters. So thank you for your considering that. We also wanted to let you know that we have scholarships for graduating seniors. This matters right now. Uh, our students, we're so proud of our graduating seniors, and it's not just kids that go to Easter. We're proud of every single one of them because it's been hard. <laughs> I mean, there's something called COVID in the middle of there. Um, we're proud of our teachers and the way that they supported all of our students in this community because they're all our kids, whether they're yours or mine or not. And so we show up for them too. And so this church uh, has this incredible scholarship fund. We'd love for them to fill those things out. They're on the website as well. Spring Fling is coming Thursday, May 23rd. This is awesome. Why is it awesome? Is because this church has some incredible partners. This is your chance to meet some of those incredible partners. Our Spanish-speaking church. We have Homework Help. We have Loaves and Fishes. We have Treehouse. We have all these ministries that we're like, yes, they're our partners. We'll come meet them. <laughs> and we'll celebrate together all of the good things that God is doing between all of us. And so grab one of these little handy flyers on the way out because this is your way to invite someone else. This isn't for you. 
<laughs> this is for you to be able to invite someone because there's going to be inflatables. There's going to be a dunk tank that Pastor Megan's going to do 4 to 7 p.m. in. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> this, I know I'm making decisions on the fly. I, yeah, you go away for one week and here we go. There's going to be great food, right? And then there's going to be art projects. This is going to be, I told you it's going to be awesome. So please, Thursday, May 23rd, 430 to 730, please come out and hang out with us. It's going to be an amazing, amazing time. Uh, we also want to let you know that next week uh, the summer worship schedule changes, uh, right? Memorial Day weekend, thank you. Getting ahead of myself because I'm so excited about this. So worship, this service will stay the same at 9 a.m. except it will be just outside by the lake, which is a beautiful way. To, so bring a chair, bring all the things, come on down, let the kids run. It's all good. But it's a great time to be outside. And then 10 a.m. at the hill. So that is the change, right? You with me? So 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. would be a good thing. Um, so please. Come and share this amazing time together. With that, I invite you to stand as you're able to receive the blessing. As you head out into this coming week with whatever it may hold, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's sing together. Leash your kingdom's power, reaching the near. No force of hell can stop your beauty changing hearts. You made us more, much more than this. Awake the kingdom seed in us. Fill us with the strength and love of Christ. We are your church. We are the hope on earth. serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.